Hello, my name is Reverend Kelly Wilk, and I'm going to be talking a bit today about spiritual maintenance. Now, there are some ways to successfully engage in spiritual self-care in a way that enables you to function in a more spirit-filled way. Some of these techniques include meditation, prayer, grounding, centering, and another is clearing. So clearing is a way of cleaning your energy body. Uh, it's similar in many respects to cleaning the physical body, but it takes place with your personal energy field. So over time, very naturally, you pick up energies, and these energies can come from a variety of places, uh, where you go, who you interact with, uh, your emotions, electromagnetic stress, and many other places. Uh, so just as it's a good idea to regularly clean your body, so it's clean and it functions properly. It's also very important to keep your spiritual and energetic body clean and clear. This helps to prevent your thoughts and emotions from kind of being held in a negative state, uh, which in turn will only attract more negative energy. It also makes you a clearer channel to bring in high, pure energies of spirit, which are always available to guide and direct you in life. So how exactly does one clear themselves? It can be a very quick and easy process. Uh, it is best done regularly, much like a shower, but for your energetic body. So once you've achieved a relaxed state, you can clear yourself by sending any unwanted or negative or heavy energies down through your grounding cord and into Mother Earth. From there, the earth will transmute these energies so they can be used by other physical and spiritual creatures. And this is just part of the earth's incredible range of abilities. Some may worry about sending this energy to the earth, and I just want to reassure you that this is a safe and natural process. Just as humans give off waste like carbon dioxide, which can then be utilized by plants, and plants give off oxygen, which are then utilized by humans, we have similar occurrences happening with a mental, emotional, spiritual energies, and a number of other beings on the physical planes and on other planes. That being said, if you do truly feel uncomfortable clearing through your grounding cord to the earth, please respect that feeling. I'm sure it's valid for you. In that case, it may be better to clear using spiritual fire. And a common way to do this is to use the violet flame. The violet flame is a special spiritual fire energy, and it's brought to our world from the Master Saint Germain. It simply appears as a flame. It looks a great deal like a flame, but instead of being orangey red, it is violet in color. And it has this incredible ability to clear away energies in a very safe and permanent way. To clear using this technique, you may want to call upon the aid of St. Germain. Even though if you do not feel comfortable doing this, it is not necessary. Set your intent to use the violet flame from heaven to clear your own negative energies for the highest and greatest good of all involved. Now picture in your mind's eye some fire-safe container, perhaps a fireplace, a fire pit, a fire bowl, and see a great violet flame rise up in this container. See yourself standing close to it. Now pour out any negative thoughts, feelings, energies, and clearly see them being consumed, being burned up, being transmuted by the violet flame. These energies will be completely transmuted into high, light, positive energies. Once you complete this process, give thanks to the violet flame and see it disappear. Remember, this doesn't have to take a long time, but it does tend to work best if it's done regularly. Now, in some cases, it might be a good idea to do some clearing of an entire area instead of merely yourself and your own energy body. 
And again, it's possible to set up a grounding cord like connection to a place or to an object that you might want to clear. And it is also possible to see an entire object or an entire place, like your home or your place of work, being covered by the violet flame. It is important with all of these visualizations to set your intention first. See the image in as clear detail as you can manage. And then after you do the visualization, give thanks and release the energies. And that's the information I have today for clearing. There are many more topics to be covered regarding clearing, but these are some basics for everyday use. Thank you so much for joining me. We're going to move right along to another spiritual maintenance practice, and that is grounding. Our bodies are composed of our physical selves and our spirit selves. Our physical bodies, of course, have a variety of needs. And one of these needs is to be connected to the earth. This connection to the earth is grounding. This connection has multiple benefits, and as with most good habits, it's best if it can be practiced regularly. It doesn't need to be difficult or time-consuming in any way. So here's my step-by-step -step grounding. First, bring awareness to your body and relax. Now, bring your awareness to the earth in a similar way. Uh, it may be beneficial if you picture um, maybe a place outside. It can be a field, the woods, the ocean. You may even picture something like the Earth's core. But take a moment to try to really align and bring your awareness to Earth energies. Now, the next step is the most fun in my experience, and it involves connecting your physical self to the earth. So first, I'm going to talk about how to accomplish this with visualization. Um, and then I'm going to talk about making this grounding connection in kind of a more physical way. So first, to make the connection using visualization, see yourself <clears throat> and the earth in some way. There are many, many ways to do this successfully. I'm sure you can come up with some that fits very well with you personally and your needs, um, but I'll give you a few common examples. Uh, like one is to imagine yourself as a tree or a plant and to see your roots going deep into the earth. You may visualize as strongly as possible using all of your senses, your feet, being buried in soil or sand. You might also see yourself kind of nestled in a cave or a den, I really like this one, um, or perhaps even just seated on a rock. So spend a few minutes with this image clearly in mind. Picture it detail by detail. Really put yourself in the picture. Really feel yourself there. Now, once you are grounded, once you form this connection, you'll know because you'll have a strong sense of being supported. You'll suddenly feel a lot more grounded. So once you have this sensation, you can send any excess energy down to the earth. Picturing a root-like cord extending out of the soles of your feet. Now, the earth has this remarkable ability to transmute negative energy from living beings and make it usable for other life forms. So you can go through and send any jittery, negative, dark, heavy, or just unnecessary energy right out of you. Transfer it out of you into the earth so that you can feel nice and grounded and clear. And you still have that firm, supportive earth connection. Now you should feel grounded. If 
for whatever reason, you don't have time to visualize this, to kind of go through this process in your mind's eye, there are a few quick and easy ways to physically ground. Uh, you might carry around a grounding stone with you, um, perhaps obsidian or jasper, uh, oftentimes something, you know, dark brown or green colored works very well here. You might drink some water, or if you can touch the ground or um, even smelling certain essential oils like patchouli or cinnamon can bring you into a more grounded state pretty quickly, almost instantly. Now, these methods, these kind of more practical earth, earthy methods should not be used exclusively to ground. Um, it is good if you can throw in the visualization now and then, but they do work in a pinch and very well too. So thank you for joining me on this talk about grounding. And now we're moving on to talk a bit about another part of spiritual maintenance, and that is connecting. Now, we all have physical and spiritual bodies. They benefit from this regular care. And this happens on multiple levels. And after you go through a process like clearing and grounding, another thing that can really benefit uh, your spirit body is connecting. This means connecting to source, uh, connecting to the all that is, to the creator, to spirit, to whatever you want to call it. Connecting is part of regular spiritual maintenance. And it's often paired with grounding and for a good reason. It enables your spirit to recharge and refresh itself with light and love from spirit. Just as grounding allows you to connect and refresh yourself with the energies of the earth. So I find both of these... I just feel a lot better if I do both of these on a regular basis, and they work very well when they're done together. Uh, right now, I'm just going to be talking about just the connecting portion. Um, and it's nice initially if you can reach a place of calm, where you're relaxed. Now, you can connect to spirit even if you're not calm and relaxed, but you'll probably get more out of the the experience if you can be a bit relaxed and calm. So next comes the visualization of spirit. And what you want to do here is visualize or imagine something that feels like the highest, purest spiritual source to you. So some people might immediately have an image of a holy person Jesus, the Buddha, another spiritual being come to their minds. You can also simply have a feeling, a feeling of pure love or pure light or goodness. And you can even focus on something like just light or some sort of other holy symbol or image. Now, if you can hold a visual and also hold a feeling and focus on that very strongly, that will really speed the process along. So we'll connect our own selves with spirit. And after we've calmed our own bodies, we've brought an image and a feeling of spirit to us. We're now going to picture a silver cord running up the midline of our bodies, extending out through the crown of our heads. And this cord travels up through the heavens, through the sky, moving up to space, pushing even farther, even past that, to the highest light you can find, where we have pure light heavenly spirit. You're going as far as you can. You may encounter multiple lights. 
and you want to keep traveling until you get to the highest light you can access. This should be filled with a feeling of goodness and light. And you are now able to access that love and that light from your silver cord of connection. You should feel a bit of an outpouring. I feel almost like a rush, almost like a shower coming down. Sometimes it's more noticeable than other times. Sometimes it feels very strong. Sometimes it's just a little slighter or glittery feeling. And once you find yourself connected, you should find your spiritual abilities begin to be enhanced. And of course, spirit connection can help you really in all aspects of your life. I know it has in mine. And that is my spiritual connection process. Next, I'd like to talk a little bit about healing. And the healing I wanted to talk about involves using spiritual energies for healing. So I would like to note at this time, I'm not a medical professional, and I strongly advise anyone suffering to seek out the proper healthcare professional for their own health issues. Um, it's not frequently acknowledged by our modern society, but positive energies do contribute significantly to the success and comfort of those who are suffering, be it in a physical, mental, spiritual, or any other way. And healing is accessible to each and every one of us by right of our inherent connection to our divine source. And this basic process of spiritual healing can be utilized by everyone. So first, you probably already have something in mind that you want to work on, on sending healing energies to. It can be healing in a traditional sense, as in a person is suffering from a physical disorder or a disease or an injury. Uh, but this can also involve mental or emotional discomfort. Um, it could be even not a specific person, but a situation that needs to be healed. Uh, so some examples of situations that can benefit from healing energy uh, include workplace interactions, family interactions, uh, specific relationships with others like romantic relationships or friendships, um, and even political and environmental issues. So once you have just one specific issue in mind, even if it's a very big issue, you want to set your intent. So say the issue out loud or silently and state that you wish it to be healed completely in keeping with the highest and greatest good of all involved. And now you can picture the situation and it has almost a giant beam of light energy reaching up into the sky to the very source of light. So once you see this connection, you can see the situation being inundated with the positive light of spirit. And you want to spend some time, it doesn't have to be a very long time, but perhaps a minute or two with this image, being sure the person or place or situation is completely enveloped, completely covered with the light of spirit. See it just soaking in the light and being transformed. And next you want to picture intense feelings of relief, of happiness, of joy, whatever feelings you would feel if you knew the situation was healed. And to end, you want to say something like, it is done, or amen, or so be it, and give thanks. And then have faith that all will be completed as it should be. And very possibly in miraculous ways. So I just have a quick note about this healing process. Um, 
which involves kind of the how uh, in quotes that it is healed. And I would like to say that based on my personal experience, um, I would say you don't have to picture every step of how something is healed. Just focus on the end result, the positive emotions and gratitude. And let spirit handle the details. All right, so that's my outline of healing. Thank you so much.